All right, guys, welcome back. We're going to do video number seven, which is really exciting because we're getting closer to the end. And um, it's 1.30 now, so I'm probably going to have to do the last one tomorrow, but then I'll get everything uploaded for you guys. Um, all right, I left off on 1.50, which means this is video number seven, and we are doing 151 to 175. So um, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay, we left off on what does ESOP stand for? Now we're going to go to a creditor would be allowed rights to life insurance policy proceeds if which of the following beneficiaries is chosen? Now this is going to be the insurance estate. And essentially, um, how I would explain that is if it, if your estate is the beneficiary, your estate is the, you living on past your death is the best way that I can describe it. So your creditors would have the ability to go after the money that you owe them because it's in your estate. If that money passes to your mother, your children, or your spouse, it's no longer you. So the creditors can't go after that money because your mother, your children, and your spouse are not the debtor. Best way that I can describe that to you guys. Which of the following is not considered to be an act of insurance solicitation? And this one's going to be D, publishing a magazine where one of the advertisers is an insurer. Which type of life insurance offers flexible premiums, a flexible death benefit, and the choice of how the cash value will be invested? Now, if you watched the last video, which I hope you did, uh, you saw me uh, talk about how light bulbs should go off in your head when there are certain words, keywords that are associated with each other. So if you remember, flexible will make your light bulb go off in your head that we're talking about universal and choosing how cash value will be invested will make the light bulb, light bulb go off in your head for variable, meaning flexible premiums, flexible de death benefit, and the choice of how the cash value will be invested will tell you that the answer is B, a variable universal life policy. I hope that was helpful. When an applicant applies for insurance, the process by which the insurer company determines whether to issue the policy is called what? And that one is B, underwriting. The probability of death listed by year are demonstrated in, and again, if you watch one of the earlier videos, you know, if you're bilingual, you're probably going to have a little bit of an easier time on this one. What is death? And this one's going to be mortality tables, right? Death, morte. All right, this is one fifty-six. Which provision will pay a portion of the death benefit prior to the insured's death due to a serious illness? And we know that can be terminal illness, critical illness, chronic illness, critical injury. Those are some of um, the accelerated benefit riders that you can get your benefit paid out on, right? And those are, D, I just said accelerated death benefit, <laughs> your ABRs. Which of the following is not a component of determining policy premiums? And A, dividends is going to be your answer. Whether or not the company pays dividends is dependent upon a lot of different things, such as being a participating company versus a non-participating company. And also, if the participating company 
even has a surplus to pay out dividends. So dividends would not be a component in determining what your premium is for your policy. Pam is the primary beneficiary of a life insurance policy and wants to let the death benefit accumulate and receive only the monthly investment proceeds. Which settlement option should she choose? And we know this is B, interest option, because she just wants to take um, payments basically that are the interest, and then she wants to leave the principal in there to accumulate to pay her out more interest. A situation in which there is only a chance of a loss or no loss is a what? And this one's gonna be pure risk, so that's A, loss or no loss, it's purely risk, right? Now, speculative risk would be loss or gain, like gambling, right? We're speculating on what could potentially happen, but loss or no loss is purely risk. At what age is a surviving spouse without dependents eligible for Social Security survivor benefits? B, 60. The Fair Credit and Reporting Act's main purpose is to do what? Fair Credit and Reporting Act. And that's going to be C, protect consumers with guidelines regarding credit reporting and distribution. How does underwriting differ between group life and individual life insurance? And this is going to be D, medical questions must be answered on individual life insurance. Now, we know that group life comes from our employer that has master policy. And then because we're an employee, we get to have a um, certificate of benefits, right? So you, with a group policy, just opt in to the employer's insurance. You don't have to go through underwriting really at all. You're just opting in. Whereas with individual life insurance, you have to answer the medical questions that are on your application. And then potentially depending on your health history, you might have to do labs and do blood and urine, right? So it's a little bit of a different process there, but that is the difference, whether you have to go through that medical underwriting process or if you're just opting in. All the following circumstances must be met for loss retention to be an effective risk management technique, except for what? Um, and this is going to be B, probability of loss is unknown. A participating company is also referred to as what type of insurer? B, mutual insurer. ESOPs are typically invested in, now we know what ESOP stands for, right? Employee Stock Ownership Plan. So that tells me that my answer is C, employer stock. An individual who transacts life, disability, or life and accident and health insurance on behalf of an insurer is called what? You and I are, right? Life agent. A contract requires, and you guys already know this because I went through the four requirements of a contract with you. 
this one should be easy. And this is an offer and acceptance of the contract terms. Sorry. Um, so when it comes to life insurance, we know client puts in an application for life insurance and says, I want X amount of coverage. And then the company comes back and says, in order to offer you with your health history, X amount of coverage, it's going to cost you X amount of dollars a month. And there is no negotiation. You either take it or you leave it. If you accept it, right, offer an acceptance, if you accept it, you just pay your premium and the policy goes in force. Joanne has a $100,000 whole life policy with an accumulated $25,000 of cash value. She would like to borrow $15,000 against that cash value. Which of the following statements is true? So she wants to borrow $15,000 of her accumulated $25,000 of cash value. Which of the following is true? And this will be A, net death benefit will be reduced if the loan is not repaid. And we know that that's true because um, our loans are collateralized with our life insurance, which is why we like life insurance. So if she takes out her loan of $15,000 and then passes away, her family will get um, $100,000. <laughs> So that's 85,000, her family will get 85,000, which is the difference, right? The net death benefits reduced if that loan's not repaid. It's the difference of what's, what she's owed or what she owes. In which of the following relationships would there not be an insurable interest? We talked about insurable interest, I think in the last video, maybe two videos ago, but you must have insurable interest in order to get life insurance on anybody. So you always have insurable interest in yourself. Sometimes you, like your parents, your kids, your spouse, people like that, you'll have an insurable interest in. So which one of these does not have insurable interest? This is business owner to business customer. Because if I own a hat shop and you walk in to buy a hat, your customer and I don't know you, why would I want to get life insurance on you? No insurable interest. Upon policy delivery, which of the following must a producer have an applicant sign if no initial premium was collected with the life insurance application? And this is C, a good health statement because the company just wants to know that you're Health has not changed in between um, when you put in the application to when it got accepted and you start paying your premiums. Because sometimes there can be a month in between, sometimes it can be two months in between. They just want to make sure that your health has not changed. Which of the following statements do not apply to child coverage in a family policy? not apply to child coverage in a family policy. And this is D, only children born prior to policies issue date may be included. That's not true. If you have like a child rider, it will cover all of your children. So indefinitely, however many children you end up having, they will be on that policy as well. In a renewable term life insurance policy, the contract will usually do what? And this is gonna be A, require a higher premium payable at each renewal. And that of course is because let's say you have a 20 year term and it's renewable, so you can renew it after the 20 years when it expires. Um, it's gonna be a higher premium because you're now 20 years older. And in those 20 years, likely your health has changed as well. You might have developed conditions over the last 20 years that you didn't have the first time around. So inevitably that premium will be higher. An insurer can be protected from adverse 
selection with which policy provision? And we know adverse selection is just something that's negatively affecting the company. So we're protecting against a negative outcome with the suicide clause, because if there were no suicide clause, um, what's to stop 10 people from saying, I'm, I have a bunch of like gambling debts and I am just gonna buy a life insurance policy to cover those gambling debts and then just off myself and my debts will be repaid and I don't have to worry about it anymore. So in order to stop that from happening and causing huge payouts to happen back to back to back for a company, they put in a suicide clause, which states if you have life insurance and commit suicide within the first two years, it won't pay out because after that, it, there's a less likelihood of it being premeditated at that point. Which of the following is not a benefit of insurance? And this one is losses due to fraud are eliminated. Yeah. Um, we can't eliminate losses due to like identity theft. Um, or credit card theft, anything like that. That's not what life insurance is for, of course. And that's one seventy-four. So this is the last one then. Just another quick video, I feel like. Yeah, this is 175. Which of the following life insurance classifications charges the highest premium? Highest premium. And this one's gonna be substandard. And we know that because you start obviously at standard, that's like what the majority of people within your age, whether you're male or female, the majority of people will be kind of right at standard, right? They're in decent health, don't have a lot of issues going on. And then if you are better than normal, better than standard, you can be right preferred or elite and it just goes up from there and as your um, rating goes up, your premium goes down. So if you are substandard, that means that your premium will be higher because your health is worse. So substandard would charge the highest premium of all of these risk classifications. And that is 175. So that was another quick one. Thank you so much for joining us for video number seven. And I'm not, too tired. I've been drinking my green tea. So I think I might crank out the last video tonight and get these uploaded for you guys by tomorrow. All right. We'll see you in video number eight, which is a video. I'm going to be giving you guys my special test taking anxiety alleviating trick that I would always teach at the end of my class that helped me to pass my insurance and real estate exams on the first try that everyone that would take my class would be like, oh my gosh, it's so simple. Like it's so easy. Such a nice trick. Uh, I'm going to give that to you guys at the end of the next video. So excited for that. I'll see you at the next one.